Hey, it's Jessie from Sage Bodywork, and today I wanted to show you some foot massage techniques that use a method you might not have ever thought of before. And don't worry, none of these techniques will have you using your thumbs like windshield wipers, which I know from experience hurts at the end of the day. Today's little secret is adding movement to the massage that you're doing. So as we massage the foot, we're going to be taking it through its range of motion for each joint, from the ankle to the tarsals, to the metatarsals, to the toes. And by adding movement, we're affecting the deep joint capsule of the foot, as well as having a significant neuromuscular impact. So we're gonna work head to toe. The first joint we're considering is the ankle joint or the talocrural joint. The two bones of the lower leg, the tibia and the fibula, come together and grip the ankle like a wrench. So we have the talus right here, that's the actual bone that it's gripping. Um, and the talus is a highly mobile bone. So if you want to find this joint, we're going to see where the ankle naturally bends. Above that is leg bone, below that is tarsals or the talus. And I want my fingers only on the talus. We're going to bring the foot into a slight bend or dorsiflexion and then lean back just a little. And as I lean back, I'm tractioning the talus away from those lower leg bones and opening up the ankle joint or the talocrural joint. So we have three techniques that we can do from this one position here. The first would be simply to bend the foot, create that traction, lean back and hold. And this traction is going to be a deep stretch for that joint capsule, all of the ligaments and connective tissue deep within the ankle joint, get a nice stretch. We can also hold this traction, laying back, neutralize it, maintaining the bent position of the ankle and create a nice rhythm doing that which will end up creating a jostle all the way up to the head. So this is a nice technique for connecting the foot to the head. But even as that jostle um, becomes full body, I want my intention to stay right here in the ankle joint. And it's just a very small opening and closing of the joint right here. Ankle mobility is really important for how we stand, walk, run, and when our ankle doesn't want to move, we end up suffering at the knee, the hip, the spine. So really, no matter what issue your client is presenting with, it's worthwhile to check in with the ankle joint here and help it open up. So we have our steady traction. We have our opening and closing jostle. The third technique you can do in this position is to create that traction and then bend and straighten the ankle. And as we do this, we're rolling the talus joint through its full range of motion with some extra breathing space created from that traction. And by doing that, we're gonna help work out any sticky spots deep inside that joint capsule where these three bones connect. And always important as you come out of that traction, you want the foot to be in a neutral position. So I'm not you know, doing traction in all these crazy bent twisted places, but I'm neutral, dorsiflexed, and then we lean back to make traction. So moving on from the talus, we have other tarsal bones. In front of the talus, we have a bunch, a jumble of little bones that are kind of designed like an old stone bridge. So they're very cuboid and they link the ankle joint down to these long bones of the foot. There's not a ton of movement here, but it does enable a lot of the pronation and supination movement of the foot. So that's what we're really gonna play with. And as we play with that, we will bring in some soft tissue work. What I'm gonna do is have my thumb be neutral, place it here. And then as I pronate and supinate the foot with my other hand, I'm rolling the soft tissue on the, the plantar surface of the foot onto my thumb and creating pressure that way. So this hand is really not working that hard. This hand isn't working that hard either, but it is the one creating the pressure just by bringing that foot onto my thumb. So that lets me protect my thumb as I do this. And by playing with pronation and supination, 
we're going to have a more interesting neuromuscular conversation with the foot because we're bringing in movement. Some people are going to have a lot of pronation and supination. Other people you'll find are going to be really locked up. So it's just a matter of feeling how this foot wants to move and encouraging whatever movement you find. In her case, she's quite flexible and has a lot of healthy movement here. Behind the talus is the heel bone, the calcaneus. We do have movement at the calcaneus too, but it's more significant for all the myofascial tissue anchoring on it. So we have all the plantar fascia anchoring on the front here, and the calf itself comes down through the Achilles tendon and attaches to the heel bone here. Um, so that would be a different video talking more about soft tissue work. In front of the tarsals are the metatarsals. Much like the hand, these long bones connect our ankle to our toes. And the tarsals are going to have a part in pronation, supination, um, inflection, extension. And also in between each toe, we're going to have movement in between each metatarsal. We can do this scissoring motion to encourage these bones to move as individuals as well. When we look at the foot and see and consider how it makes contact with the floor, we can see we have a tripod here. The foot has a tripod. We have three points of contact with the ground. And the reason it's formed like a tripod is so that when we step, it can absorb the impact. And when we lift our foot off the ground, it can bounce back. So that springiness really helps absorb impact from running and walking and lets us maintain our joints for longer. So we really want to promote this springiness when we're doing our soft tissue work. So as I'm working on the, um, on the muscles and connective tissue of the metatarsals here, I can think about bringing the foot into a spring, bringing everything together, and then letting it be long, springing it like this. As I'm doing this, I'm hearing, I'm feeling a little bit of crunchiness, a little bit of clicking. So as long as my client isn't showing discomfort, I'm just gonna try to work through that. So all this work, I'm thinking about increasing the arch of the foot bringing it together, letting it spring up. And the metatarsals, another um, movement or range of motion we can play with. The knuckles represent where the metatarsals meet the phalanges. And right now it's pretty much a flat line, but they do have the range of motion to bend. So I'm going to press my thumbs into the center here and go all along the length of the metatarsals and really encourage this foot to take on a rounded shape. If we ask ourselves, how do the toes move? Of course, they straighten and bend. And they might not get quite as much of that as they want these days in our shoe wearing society, but I'm still not gonna spend a lot of time doing this in a massage. Um, instead, what I might do is grasp here where the phalanges meet the metatarsals to stabilize that. Um, and then grasp the toes and take them into a rotation. So if I were to just focus on the big toe here, I'm trying to move it as much as I can without pushing past resistance. And I'll go both directions. And this can feel surprisingly nice. A lot of times as I do this, I'm providing a little bit of traction away from the foot. So a little bit of this leaning back. But my goal isn't to like pop the toes. Um, just, just a little bit of traction so we get some length and engagement. So after all that massage, hopefully your client's feet are feeling really great and healthy and springy and light and revitalized. And hopefully your thumbs are feeling pretty good too and not as tired as they might normally feel after doing a long foot massage. Honestly, our feet get compressed all day long as we walk. So there's only so much value to going into the soft tissue and pressing it down even more. 